doing a little float fishing today and I think we've got we did have something on here just as I turned the camera on I should have kept reeling um, you see the uh, <coughs> darn the worms up the um, line here and we've got the Aberdeen hook it was a perch I wasn't paying attention so I've only got myself to blame there trying to get my camera on so let's reload the uh, worm and see if we can get Mr. Perch back again I didn't want to run the camera for nothing. The only thing I don't like about float fishing, there's nothing wrong with float fishing. It's not a, people think, oh, that's a kid's way of fishing. It isn't. Uh, a lot of commercial fishermen do use float fishing. And the only thing you have to be careful of is that not letting your line tangle. Let's just go back out there again. Uh, tangle around your float or your float to get tangled around the line, it will do that and then it'll not. I'm using a spring float which is just attached about four and a half feet up the from the hook. And we're getting some action which is good because I usually bottom fish and I've not been able to just been catching a lot of bottom feeders like gobies. Let's see, so the perch are probably spooling, um, sorry, schooling about five feet down. Let's see if we can get another. A lot of people out here on the point Up, we've got nibbles. Come on, come on. Okay, I'm going to switch you off for a minute to save some recording time here. Okay, we've got another one. Small perch. Hope he didn't swallow the uh, hook. Hold still, baby, because I don't want to hurt you. It's the trouble with Aberdeen hooks now. I can't see where he's got it. Okay, so we're going to just switch you off because I really don't want to film this. Poor little guy. Okay, here he is. Once we got the forceps in there, we... We could get him out, so we're just going to pop him back in, and off he goes. He's fine. A little bit slow, but he should be okay. And there we go. So we're just going to add a little bit more scent. I think this is anisette. It also glows in the dark. Glow Lunker Lotion. Great for fishing. When uh, it's dark or on cloudy days. But one of the things I do want to explain why I've got you online here is um, there's no such thing as a magic potion when you're fishing. Despite what all the advertisements say. All the scents do is take the human smell off the bait after you've handled the bait or the lure. I mean, there's um, people who smoke, 
people who've washed their hands and put hand sanitizer and then handled the bait, fish are, gonna, uh, are going to sense that. They're going to smell. They have an acute sense of smell. So that's really what a scent does. It takes the human essence off your lure and off your bait. So let's throw this out again and see if we can get something else. The wind keeps catching it. You seem to be more in the rocks here, down about four feet, just small ones, not big ones. Of course, with an Aberdeen hook, you have to set the hook like you would a J-hook. You give it a quick tug like that. Keep the tension on the line. And we got another perch. I wondered why my line was slipping. I've got the uh, reverse off. Okay, here we go with another one. Whoops, hold still. Let's get this out. There we go. Let's try again. My anti-reverse was off, that's why I kept losing my... As I was saying, with your Aberdeen hooks, just like your regular J-hook, you've got to give it a... You've got to set the hook by giving it a bit of a tug. Unlike your circle hook, where you just simply lift the tip of your rod and start reeling, and what will happen is the uh, the hook goes around the fish's mouth and embeds in its jaw. So you've got to remember to set your hooks when you're using Aberdeen. Now I'm using Aberdeen today because I'm float fishing, and they're very uh, they're fine hooks. Um, one of the drawbacks of using a small fine hook is that the fish can have a tendency to swallow it. So. And then you just have to just cut the hook out, um, just cut the hook off the line and throw the fish back. In a lot of cases, the uh, digestive system will dissolve the hook. If it doesn't, the fish will die anyway, and it's going to just become seagull food. But don't be ripping the hook out the fish's mouth if you can't get it out. Uh, we still got the worm on. Let's just move my weight up a bit. Okay, that's why it's... Don't really need to throw furry fur out because the ledge is there and that appears to be where they're, they're feeding. out there reading this book probably thinks I'm mad because I'm talking to myself here. <laughs> Doesn't realize I've got a camera on my chest. Come on. Oh, we got something down there. I can see it hanging around the hook, but he doesn't want to seem, doesn't seem to want to take it. <sighs> Just using slip shots here, that way I can 
simply adjust the length of the leader. I am using a, a quick release swivel here um, because these are snelled hooks. So they already have, um, when you're using floats, you've got to have a long leader and you need to be very careful what's behind you, people, bushes. You will get snagged. The joy of fishing. Got another one. Keep the tension on. Oh, jumped. Darn. Let's go out there again. Just about there. I don't do a lot of float fishing, so I'm not as proficient with this style of fishing, but it is a lot of fun. Now the trick is to wait for the float to go under and you can feel a real tug on the line and then set the hook. Don't try and set the hook when the, it just bobs up and down because you just pull the bait straight out of the fish's mouth. I don't know if that's, no, it's probably just the waves doing that. Okay, we're going to switch you off for a bit to save some recording time, and if anything happens, we'll wake you up again. <laughs> 